Hey y'all and welcome to Thrill Thrifter. My name is Julie and in today's video we are going to be doing some thrifted upcycles. Most of these things I have thrifted over the last several months or weeks even. Some of them I haven't even showed you guys in a haul yet. I'm so very excited because today's video is in collaboration with Yvonne over at Ginger Chic Rehab. And most of you probably already watch her, but if you do not, you have to go check out her channel. She is amazing at finding fun thrift items and then flipping them for resale. Now I am not personally a reseller, but I love how she redoes a lot of her thrifted items and I get a lot of good ideas from her. What I love is that she does not just buy something off of a shelf. She does not just thrift it and then put it in her booth to resell. She is going to do something to that thrifted item before she sells it. And I love that. I love that she puts her special little touch on it. If you're new here and you're coming over for, from Yvonne's channel, I love to thrift. Thrifting is everything to me. I mean, outside of God and family. But I love to thrift. So you will see a lot of thrifting, thrift hauls, and how I style those items in my home on my channel. So if that's something that you are interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and join us every week with a brand new video. Okay, so this bench right here was given to me by a friend. I got this for free. I do not like the sunflowers though, so my husband is just going to help me to remove these sunflowers. He starts just by cutting the pegs off, and then I realize once I have him cut them all down that I said, I'm just going to fill these holes with some wood filler, and he said, well, why didn't you tell me that? I could have just cut the wood flush, and you wouldn't have had to use as much glue. So anyway, that's kind of what we're going over right here. So he ends up putting the pegs back in there, and then cutting them off flush with the wood, so I don't have to do as much work on that. And my plan for this was I really wanted it to be able to be sanded and have a stained wood look. But y'all, I do not know what these people painted this with. I tried to sand this with every grit of sandpaper and I probably would have had the wood so thin had I tried to keep going. I don't show it on video how hard I'm trying to get this off but trust me I don't know what this paint is on here but I did not end up getting to do to this bench what I had originally planned so it does not turn out exactly like I wanted but that's just what happens sometimes with these projects so that's just what we're going to do. I end up going in and painting it with this Waverly chalk paint in the ivory color just because y'all I could not get that I could not get that sanded down. Okay so now I notice I'm showing you up close that I'm having some bleed through issues. I was afraid it would do that. But this coat here that I've got on is just going to act as my primer coat. And now I'm just going to take it out and give it a coat of Rust-Oleum spray paint because this is going to sit on my front porch. Okay y'all, next up is this stool that goes to my antique vanity. I have the vanity in our homeschool room and I use it as a desk and the mirror that goes to it is actually in here in my living room on my buffet cabinet. So we kind of have the pieces to this antique vanity all over the house. However, this stool was out in our shed and a storm come through a couple of months ago and knocked a hole in the roof and this got water damage all over it. So I decided that I wanted to bring it in the house and keep it you know safe so I want to give it a makeover because it did get a lot of water on the stool and everything and ruined all of the fabric but I'm showing you this as part of the thrifted makeover li uh, on the list because you can find stools like this all of the time in the thrift store so if you see something like this and it looks as rough as mine does don't underestimate it because you can bring it home and fix it up I am just going to be using some drop cloth to cover it with but because there is so much damage underneath all of the fabric i wanted to put this little underlay stuff on there also so i do have some of that both of these were leftover pieces that i have had i've had the burlap i made some curtains for my kitchen and i had the little under 
whatever that stuff is called, that white stuff. I don't know what it's called, actually, the, the real term for it. But I wanted to put some of that on there just to kind of, you know, make the burlap look really good and smooth. Okay, and all I'm doing now is I just want to line this seam up. I'm not really sure where I want this, if I want this in the middle or if I want it on the side. So all I'm trying to do right here is just kind of look at it, play around with it, and see where exactly I want this seam to go. I start out with it in the middle, but then I realize I don't really like that look. I kind of like it off to the side. So then I'm just going to kind of situate it on here before I start stapling it down good. Okay, and even though this part is the underneath the stool part, I wanted it to have a more finished kind of look. I just don't like things to be messy. I mean, what if you're laying on my floor and you happen to look up and see how messy that is? I don't know. I'm just weird like that. So anyway, I do want to give this a more finished look. So I'm kind of tucking it in under the white and then stapling it so that it looks really neat underneath there. Okay, now to do the corners, I thought that I would include this. What I wanna do is I'm gonna cut off a big piece of the material here on the corner because I don't want it to be all bulky. I want my top to lay flat on my stool when I put it all back together. So I'm just gonna take off some of that on the corner of the drop cloth. And then when I staple this down, all I'm really doing is it's, I'm kind of putting it on there almost as if I was wrapping a present.
next up is this bar stool. I actually have three of these bar stools. I had all three of them at my bar and I got them from my daughter who was taking them to our church garage sale many months ago. And I decided that I would like to have these in my house. So I snatched them up and I paid nothing for these. These were completely free. This one though has always given us trouble though. It's always been really loose and we discovered it finally just broke the other day. We we're kind of nervous about leaving it there for people to sit in and all that kind of stuff. So I decided that I would just take it and turn it into a plant stand. We could have probably repaired it and used it as a bar stool like we were, but I really didn't have enough room for it at my bar. So I decided that we were just gonna take it apart and I was gonna make it over and turn it into a plant stand. I am using it currently, you'll see in just a minute though, for Christmas trees because it's Christmas time. But once Christmas is over, I will be probably putting this on my back porch or my back patio that's all covered and kind of enclosed and using it as a plant stand. Okay, now I am going to use some of this Gorilla wood glue. I have kind of a hard time because this is this piece goes in like really as a tight fit, but I know if I can just get some of the wood glue on it and get it back in there, that it will stick pretty good and really tight. And since we're not gonna be using it to sit on as a bar stool, I'm not as concerned about it, but I do want it to stay and I want this piece to kind of stay in place. So I'm just gonna use some wood glue to kind of get it on there and get it to stay in place. Okay, here's the spray paint that I'm using, the black color. This is definitely not my favorite color. I prefer black matte because I don't like it to have a shiny look to it. But this is all that I could find for some reason in our town. Everybody has bought up all of the black matte. So I'm gonna use this and just make it work. Okay, now I'm just gonna sand it and give it a little bit of a distressed look on the top, but around the legs, I really go in hard and I make it look like almost like chunks of paint are missing because I really like that old worn out beat up look. I want it to look like it's been so used that a kid has just sat there at the breakfast bar and constantly kicked it with their feet and made it look that old. Okay, and the last thing that I'm gonna work on is my absolute favorite. I got this just recently. I mean, just a few weeks ago, I went to a garage sale and I saw this sitting over there by itself and I went to look and the price tag on this thing was $3, y'all. I could not believe it. This is an Ethan Allen coffee table and I am loving the look of vintage decor right now. So when I saw this, I absolutely fell in love with it. I said, $3, are you kidding me? I know what I can do to that piece. And even though I am not a reseller, I sure would have made this over to resell because I know that I could have made some money on it for it to only be $3, I couldn't believe it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is sand this sucker down because I know that this is solid wood and it's sanded 
beautifully. So all I'm gonna do is sand down the top because my plans are to stain the top, but paint the bottom and paint the hardware. So let's get this coffee table made over because it turns out beautifully and I am absolutely in love with it. Okay, this coffee table was in great condition in my opinion as far as how well it was made, but it was missing a screw here. You can see the thing that I guess holds the drawer up had come loose. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a screw and put this thing back in place. This is such an easy fix. Then, because I'm really weird about things looking very nice and clean, even though I'm not reselling it, it's going in my home, I still want things to look very nice and have clean paint lines and that sort of thing. So I'm just taping off all of the top. That's the part that I'm gonna be staining in just a little while. And I don't wanna have to take a, I don't wanna take a chance on getting paint on it and then having to resand and do all of that. So I do tape that off. Okay, I wanted to share real quick with you guys before I painted the bench that you saw at the beginning of the video, I painted this coffee table. I had quite a bit of this Waverly chalk paint left over. So rather than going and buying primer to prime that bench, I just used what I had on hand and had left over from doing the coffee table project. So that's why you see me on the bench in the beginning of the video use this Waverly chalk paint instead of primer because I didn't want to have to go out and buy something if I could just use what I had left over from this project. Okay, now we're just gonna do a little bit of distressing. I know that a lot of y'all are sick of seeing people with the farmhouse stuff doing all the distressing, but that's what I like. So I am distressing it. I wanted to show you this drawer here is not distressed. So I'm showing you how you can achieve a look if you don't wanna do the distressed versus here is the one that is distressed. This is just what I prefer, but if you don't prefer to distress something, just skip that step. Now I'm gonna get on to staining the top. Okay, y'all, so I'm just going to use this dark walnut stain on top of the coffee table. I'm going to use an old t-shirt. It was a 100% cotton t-shirt. And then you can use this little foam brush if you need it. I really didn't need that for this part, but I had it just in case. All I do, y'all, and I apologize for the lighting. I decided to do this at like 10 o'clock at night. But all I do is I take my cloth and I just dip it in the stain. And this is going to probably scare some of y'all if you've never done anything like this before. But I promise it does blend if you just keep rubbing and dipping and adding and kind of, you'll get to the color that you want the more you do it. Literally don't have any good instructions for you here other than to just keep moving. <laughs> I'm going to top this with polycrylic. I buy it in the can also, as well as the spray, but there are some things that you can do, you know, with the polycrylic that comes in a can because this stuff can get kind of expensive. I am going to use the foam brush on this. Now, don't shake your polycrylic. You only want to stir your polycrylic. I'm making myself a little stir stick because I'm so cheap that I went and got a hanger that was broke and in our recyclables and I stir my polycrylic with that. Whatever works, right? But anyway, I'm just taking the foam brush and I am trying to go with the grain of the wood and put on even layers of this polycrylic. I let it dry in between each layer. I ended up putting three coats on this just because our coffee table will get used and I want it to be good and protected.
you so much for joining me today. I hope that y'all enjoyed some of these thrifted items that I've gotten recently and kind of did a little upcycle on them to make them fit into my home. I absolutely love all of them. Sometimes they're a little challenging to work on. You have an idea. I think it's going to work the way you think it's going to work and it doesn't, but that's okay. You just got to work with it. Um, just like with the bench. I mean, I had a few issues with the bench. It did not turn out really like I wanted it to, but it's just, it's cute. It's on my front porch. It's given my front porch just a little bit of decor, a little bit of something because it really needed something. But anyway, I hope that y'all enjoyed it. Don't forget to go check out Yvonne's channel and let her know that I see Okay, y'all. We hope that you have a wonderful week. We love y'all and we will see you back here Friday with a brand new thrifting video.